Welcome. Welcome to the 1045 traditional service at Taramurra Uniting Church. Um, and welcome to our new studio, which is in my garage. Um, yeah, we've moved all the equipment into the garage and set up a new studio. I hope you still feel very much welcome here. Um, if you have any comments about the new look, you can send it through to me. But I just wanted to make sure that you're all feeling very welcome wherever you are watching this from whether you're watching it close to us, somewhere near Taramara, or from right around the state, or I even know some people last week watched from overseas. So uh, wherever you're connecting with us, uh, very much welcome. We're here to worship God this morning as we continue through our series looking at love stories. And so we're going to start our worship by focusing on God, by singing the introid, all creatures of our God and King. Just the first part of the first verse and the last part of the last verse. Let's sing together our intro. to our opening prayer, let us first hear some words from Jesus. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So let us pray. God of every good gift, we come to worship you today, seeking many things. Some of us are seeking peace. Some of us are seeking healing. Some of us are seeking answers while others look for the right questions. This morning, we trust you. We trust that you will give us what we need, what we need most, food for our souls. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our opening hymn is a wonderful um, hymn of praise, but also picks up on our theme of love. The King of Love, my Shepherd is. Let's sing together our first hymn.
great way to start the service. We're going to uh, move into a time where we virtually pass the peace to each other. But before we get to that, I've been sent uh, another little video of one of our congregational members, Sylvia, who just wants to say hello and she is holding um, a very special person in Laudry. Um, so I'll just hand over to Sylvia first. Hello everyone. Audrey and I would like to wish you all the best for the future. Please try and keep safe. We all miss each other. We all miss going to church. But this time the world is in such a bad place that we all have to keep safe. Look after each other. And I really miss you. All of you. God bless. Sylvia Thanks for that, Sylvia. And for the rest of us, shall we just remember each other as we virtually pass the peace to each other. So the peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Let's just take a moment to remember those people who are close to us, maybe our church family or wherever you're watching in from the people who help you as through your spiritual journey. Let's just take a moment to remember them. We now come to our psalm for today, Psalm 136, and I've been a little bit tricky with this responsive reading today because one of the traditional things that the Hebrew people used to do when they used to sing the psalms, because remember the psalms is a songbook, is that sometimes they would have a line that the, the leader would sing and the whole congregation would sing back the same line over and over. And I've chosen one of those psalms today uh, with the most common repeat line that we could find in Psalms, which is his love endures forever or God's love endures forever. And so um, I'm going to play the role of the leader here. I'm going to say the first part of the verse and I encourage you to read the response, which you'll notice is the same response all the way through today. So shall we read uh, the beginning part and the ending part of Psalm 136? Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of gods. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord of lords. His love endures forever. God remembers us in our time of need. His love endures forever. God provides food to every creature. His love endures forever. Give thanks to the God of heaven. His love endures forever. Indeed. As I mentioned last week, as part of our series on love stories, I've chosen some classic kids Sunday school songs to include. Songs that will remind you not only of that era that you grew up in Sunday school, but also remind us of God's love. And today I've chosen the great Sunday school song, Wide, Wide as the Ocean, which is a great song about God's love. And so you probably don't need the words, but they will be on the screen. Let's sing together this wonderful hymn, Wide, Wide as the Ocean. Thank you. 
Bible reading today comes from Hosea chapter 11. Hosea is an Old Testament um, book by one of the, what we call the minor prophets. Um, and has got some uh, a really interesting story that we're going to unpack a little bit today. And so I thank once again for the reader that has been organized for us, who is going to bring us our Bible reading from Hosea. Hosea chapter 11. Good morning, everyone. I hope you are all doing well and staying safe and connected to family and friends. We all miss you, but we're looking forward to seeing you soon. Today's reading comes from Hosea, reading from verse 1 through to verse 8, and it's headed, God's love for Israel. When Israel was a child, I loved him. And out of Egypt, I called my son. But the more I called Israel, the further they went from me. They sacrificed to Baal and they burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk, taking them by the arms. But they did not realise that it was I who healed them. I led them with human kindness and ties of love. I lifted the yoke from their neck and bent down to feed them. Will they not return to Egypt and will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? Swords will flash in their cities and will destroy the bars of their gates and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me, even if they call to the Most High he will by no means exhort them. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Admar? How can I make you like Zebulun? Oh, my heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. God bless to us the reading from his holy word. Last week I shared the love story of two people from the Old Testament book of Song of Songs um, who were truly and madly and deeply in love with each other. And I showed how their experience of love could reflect the way that God loves us. That sense of God seeking us, pursuing us and celebrating our love and the way that God's love covers us and surrounds us and, and is with us forever. I started last week's sermon with a bit of a disclaimer at the beginning say that to say that not all of our experience of love is like those two beloveds from the Song of Songs. And that some people's experience of love comes with a little bit more heartache, shall we say. When some people we love is no longer with us, whether that's through death or relationship breakdown, or that sense that sometimes love can be distorted by broken trust or in imbalance of power or unrealistic expectations. And this can be so damaging that it can cause us to, to not quite trust the power of love. And so when we talk about love, it's good to acknowledge that not all love is that same perfect love as we heard about last week that sometimes a love story can be hard work. Sometimes it can be hurtful. And that's the sort of love story I want to look at today. And so I want us to say up front that if today's topic stirs up a bunch of feelings or, or issues that you need to talk about, then please contact me or contact somebody that you trust and talk to them about it. Make sure that you realise that there are people around you who care for you and who love you and who can help you um, work through some of those issues. And whilst I'm acknowledging that this topic can be hard for people, I still think it's worth exploring. Not only because it's real, but because also it can give us an insight in the way that God loves us. So before I get stuck into the story, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, you've probably heard about 
conditional love and unconditional love. Do you know the difference between conditional love and unconditional love? You see, sometimes people place conditions on their love. They say they'll only love us if we do this or behave a certain way. For example, you know, I, I've seen some kids seem to be more loving when their kids are, are good or get good grades or succeed, but a little bit colder when their kids are, well, not good or yeah, are not succeeding. Some guys might say to their girlfriend, you know, I'll love you if you let me kiss you. Or some close friends may show love when things are going good, but if you get sick or life gets really hard, sometimes they disappear and it makes you wonder whether, hey, what was that love in the first place? Have you ever experienced any of those? I know it's always more complex than this. I've just made it too simple, but it still hurts when it feels like that somebody's love or friendship is conditional. So the opposite of conditional love is unconditional love, where we say to people, you are my friend because I like you for you, not for what you do. Or I love you no matter where you came in the race. Or I'm here for you wherever, if things get better or get worse, I'm still here for you. See, that's unconditional love. And our heart sort of really warms or resonates when we see or experience unconditional love. I want to tell you a story today of a young woman called Goma. This is my love story for this week. Goma was a young lady who discovered the difference between conditional and unconditional love. You see, Goma grew up in a Middle Eastern country where women at that time were treated like second-class citizens. It was a common belief in her country that the only good thing about a woman was her ability to get married and give birth to baby boys. Now, we don't agree with that. We think much more mutuality and equality when it comes in our society. But back then in Goma's time, unfortunately, that was the way it was. See, Goma was the first child born in her family. And when she was born, her, her father was actually disappointed that she was a girl. Can you believe that? Her father was disappointed in her for something that she had no control over. Her child was quite tough. Her mum tried to give her the love that Goma so desperately wanted, but she was treated so poorly when growing up, she had no idea of how to do that herself. Besides, she had so many other children to look after. In the end, all her mother could do was encourage Goma to accept her life the way it was and to get on with it. So poor Goma felt like she was a constant disappointment to her father and an inconvenience to her mother. Because Goma was a girl back in her society, she didn't go to school, but she was kept busy looking after the young children and her mum would try and teach her as much as she could. Goma longed to have some friends outside the home, but whenever she met anybody, people seemed to look down upon her. By the time she was 14, Goma's life had hit rock bottom. She tried and tried to win her father's approval but he hardly spoke to her at all, let alone notice her efforts. Her mother just demanded more and more from her. One day, Goma noticed a married man looking intently at her. She knew what he wanted and she knew it was wrong, but she was so desperate for affection that she allowed him to take advantage of her. It seemed to be the first time in her life that somebody actually appreciated her. Well, appreciated at least what she could give. And even though she felt dirty, she also felt exhilarated. Maybe she was okay after all. But that came crashing down the next time she saw this man because he totally ignored her. She tried to speak to him, but he rebuked her. She was totally devastated. She now saw herself as others treated her as worthless. That man became just the first in a long line of attempts to seek affection and approval. Some lasted for a short time, but all ended the same way, with Goma being rejected. But that was nothing compared to the day her father found out what she was doing 
as he hurled abuse at her, as he called her a bunch of horrible, horrible names, Gomer felt it was slightly ironic that this was the first time that her father actually had spoken to her in years. The most cutting blow came when her father, just as he was walking away, yelled at her, you will never get a man to marry you now. Gomer's father uh, kicked her out of the house and sent her to a, a relative's place in a nearby town. Gomer was just devastated. She continued the same lifestyle, partly because she was seeking affection and partly because she didn't know any other way to live. But one day, something remarkable happened. See, she met a man, and, well, instead of taking advantage of her, this man talked to her. Hosea seemed genuinely interested in who she was, not just what she could give him. Hosea came back the next day and the next, and to be honest, Gaima was a little bit scared of Hosea because he didn't play by the rules that everybody else played. He seemed to like her for who she was. And then the extraordinary thing happened. Gomer asked her to marry him. Gomer's father actually tried to convince Hosea out of it. He told Hosea all the stuff that Gomer had done. He called Homer all the horrible names. And yet Hosea still wanted to marry Gomer. Gomer's father was just glad to get rid of her. And she was married. Married. You think that after getting married, um, Gomer's life would turn good, but she really did struggle with this concept of being married. She just struggled to accept that Hosea actually loved her. You see, no one had ever loved her. How could Hosea love her? Gomer gave birth to three kids, to two boys and a girl, but even the instincts that came with motherhood could not help Gomer to accept Hosea's love for her. At one point, she tried to prove to Hosea why she was so unlovable. She went back to her ways of pleasing other men, but this time she was a married woman. When Hosea found out, his reaction was completely different to when Gomer's dad found out. You see, when Hosea found out, he cried as if he was in pain and kept saying over and over again to Gomer how much he loves her. There was no threat of kicking her out, just a plea for Gomer to remain in his love and not to live that way. Well, that just freaked Gomer out more. She could not handle this type of love, and so she ran. She left Hosea and the children and ran to the big city. There, the only job that she could get was, well, was working as a prostitute. And her boss would give her food and shelter on the condition that now she belonged to him for life and would do whatever he asked. Finally, it was a relationship that Goma could understand. He treated her like garbage and she had to live up to his expectations. But then the impossible happened. Hosea had found her. Apparently, he searched everywhere after she had left. And it took him quite some months, but eventually he had found her. And he had paid her boss the equivalent of about one year's wage and half of his crop to buy Goma back. Hosea looked at her and said, I love you too much to let you walk away. I want you to live with me for the rest of your life. I don't want you to be pleasing other men. I want you to accept my love and live with me. That is the amazing true story of unconditional love from the Bible. It's the story that's found in the Old Testament book of Hosea, chapters 1 to 3. Hosea was a prophet living around 730 BCE. As a prophet, God had called Hosea to be a spokesman, a spokesperson for for God to the people. And you could just imagine how that conversation went 
when God, uh, Hosea was sitting in the town square chatting with God. And God says to Hosea, Hosea, I want you to tell my people something. Sure, God. What do you want me to tell them? Tell them how much I love them. Okay. Okay, so how much do you love them? Oh, Hosea, God would say, I love them so much. I love them unconditionally. I wish you could help them understand just how much I unconditionally love them. I would like to understand, Hosea says. Could you show me? Hmm, God thinks. Okay. See that woman over there, Hosea? What? You mean Goma? Yeah, yeah. I want you to get to know her. But God, she's not really my type. She's got a bad reputation. Hosea, I want you to get to know her. I want you to love her. I want you to marry her. You could just imagine Hosea going, what? What? But God was insistent, marry her, Goma, despite her reputation. Love her and marry her. It, that conversation is real. You can look it up. It's in Hosea chapter 1 from verse 2. Prophets sometimes get a bit of a rough deal. Like Jeremiah had to wear linen shorts and John had to eat grasshoppers. And Hosea was asked to marry Goma. And he did what God asked. Hosea loved Goma and married her. And God showed Hosea what it means to love a person as much as God loves each one of us. And if you keep reading through the book, you can see that things initially when they got married seemed to be going fine. As I said, they had three children, which God gave terrible names to, but you can look them up. And it was looking like Goma was starting to be transformed by Hosea's love. But as we heard from Goma's side of the story when I told that, she had real trouble accepting Hosea's love. She did not trust that, that Hosea could love her. And so she went back to her adulterous ways. And you could imagine the conversation between Hosea and God after Hosea found out. You know, Hosea's going, why God? Why? Why did you ask me to marry Goma to give my love to her, if she was just going to go off and hurt me like this. Why, God, it just hurts so much. And I can just imagine God saying back to Hosea, now you know. Now you know how much I hurt when my people turn away from me and from my love. Now you can go and tell my people just how much it hurts when they go back to their old ways. And so Hosea did. And if you look in chapter 2 of Hosea, you can hear the hurt and bitterness in Hosea's response. He is hurting badly when he's sharing this message. And, and it comes through in the way that he talks. There is so much pain there. But somewhere in that chapter 2, things begin to change. And in verse 13, you can hear this sense of, of, of hope and, and longing for the relationship to be restored coming through. Like in verse 13, 14, he uses phrases like this, I'm now going to allure, allure, draw her back to me. I will speak to her tenderly. I will, yeah, you will call me my husband. I will betroth you to me forever in love and compassion. I will respond. That's how Hosea was speaking to Gomer. And you can just imagine that's the same way that God speaks to us. We might hurt God badly when we turn away from God. But let's be clear, God never walks away. God tries to win us back, as I spoke about last week. And it goes to show how far he tells Hosea, go and buy your wife back from the pimp that she is working for. An amazing part of the story. Hosea in chapter 3, we read how he spends half of his yearly wage and half of, no, nearly all of his yearly wage and half of his crop to buy back his wife because he loves her too much to walk away. In the Gospels, we read that it costs God his only own dear son to buy us back because God loves us too much to walk away. In the last 10 chapters of Hosea, well, we just keep hearing more of this story. 
you know, we hear through Hosea's experience, the experience of God's love for us, that he does get frustrated. God gets frustrated with us when our behavior um, sort of looks like we're treating God's love a bit like a toy. But listen to the way that God responds. In the Bible reading that we had today, God wants to respond in anger, but can't. Let me just read out again from Hosea chapter eight verses uh, Hosea chapter eleven verses eight and nine. This is God speaking to us. How can I give you up? How can I hand you over, Israel? My heart is changed within me, and all my compassion is stirred. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I turn and devastate you. For I am God, not man, the Holy One among you. I will not come in wrath. To me, the story that Hosea tells us reminds us that God loves us unconditionally. God is not so, some sort of a social club that we have to, you know, that God will only accept us if we fulfill the rules or, or meet the conditions. No, God loves us with no strings attached. Sure, God gets hurt when people reject his love and God wants us to have the best in life and so encourages us to live in a way that makes that happen. But let's be very clear, our actions do not affect the way that God loves us. See, God loves you when you're close and God loves you when you're far away. God loves you when re you reject his love and turn away. God loves you so much that God is willing to pay everything, whatever it takes to get you back. God is offering you love without any conditions. Do you remember back in the grace sermons where I told you the line that there is nothing that you can do to make God love you more. And there's nothing you can do to make God love you less. God just loves you. And in today's sermon, I would probably add the word, God just loves you unconditionally. I know it's hard to accept for people. And sometimes this sort of talk can be scary because we feels like, no, no, nobody can love us like that. And sometimes we just want to run away or cover our ears and not think about it because it's too hard to deal with. And that's what Gomer did. She could not accept Hosea's love for her and she ran away. But just like Hosea's love for Gomer, God keeps loving us. God will go to whatever it lengths it takes to chase you and to win you back because God loves you too much to give up and walk away. It is my prayer that all of us today, wherever you're watching this from, might be open to God's love for us. Amen. I promised you last week that we would sing the great hymn, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go. As I said, it just seems so appropriate today. So let's reflect on this message by singing the wonderful hymn, O Love That Will Not Let Me Go.
session I just want to acknowledge our offering um, and give thanks to God for all the different ways that people have been giving and um, not only financially but giving of their prayers giving of their time so let's lift up all of that to God and and give thanks to God by singing together the doxology Come now to our prayers of intercession. So let's pray. Gracious God, you are the source of all wisdom, and in a time which so many seek direction, we pray that you will inspire the hearts and minds of us, the church, your Christian people, so that we might teach and guard the faith which has held fast the lives of generations before us. We pray for the leaders of the church and the gen uh, we pray for the leaders of all the nations and for those who have authority under them we pray for respect and cooperation to be shown between those of different views that peace might rule in all the nations give all leaders wisdom and right discernment to care for those entrusted to their authority we pray for our church and all churches across the world, especially in this time of COVID-19. May all the churches be blessed with the knowledge of your loving kindness to all people. Give to us as a Christian community the willingness to give of ourselves in welcome and help us to serve one another as Christ served us. We pray for those who lack faith and do not have an awareness of your love Open their ears to hear your voice and open their hearts to the knowledge of your love in Christ. We pray for those who are weighed down today by grief or fear or sickness. And we mention their names before you now. May your living word bring comfort and healing to all in need. Lord of life, hear our prayers and make us one in heart and mind to serve you with joy forever. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Today we've been talking about the unconditional love of God. And so our last hymn just picks up on that. That wonderful sense that God not only promises to love us always, but is faithful in keeping that promise. So let's sing together the wonderful hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
in this service. I hope that this love story has been um, not only yeah, insightful to you, but maybe has helped you understand God's love for you a bit more. I just say again, that if it's stirred up some issues of hurt or heartache, and you just wish to talk to somebody, um, here is my phone number and my um, email address. Feel free to give me a call or send me a, an email whether whether it's me or somebody else from our pastoral care team we're here to here to care for you and help you and support you um we come now to our our benediction so may the god of love the god that we've been hearing about who loves us unconditionally with no strings attached may that god of love just be with you and guide you today and forevermore and so i do really play that blessing the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit may just continue to rest upon you and your loved ones. Amen. Let's sing our benediction hymn. Now unto him. Now unto him who is able to keep, able to keep you from falling and present you fall before the presence of His glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me in the garage. As I said, if you want to give me any comments um, about the new setup here or anything about the service, once again, here's my phone number and my email address. Feel free to contact me. I, I do enjoy the little chats that I get when people ring me up. Um, it's our way of, of staying connected with each other. We look forward next week to hearing the last um, part of the Love Story series where we jump into the New Testament and hear about some um, ways that Jesus showed deep friendship and love to the people around him. But that's next week. But for now, thanks for joining us. We look forward to catching up next week. Until then, see ya. Bye.